So in this next video, we're going to do some practice problems on this sheet. So in the beginning, you have to define atom, isotope, ion, positive ion, negative ion. If you look through your notes, that'll be there, so I'm not going to fill that in for you. This middle section here is a key. It's showing you everything you need to, to, uh, need to know to do the rest of it. So mass number, P plus N, atomic number, P alone. That's what identifies the element. And for charge in the top right-hand corner, remember, zero, if there's nothing written, we assume zero. Uh, it's P minus E equals C. So if there's no charge, we assume zero. So let's do a couple problems. So if you look at these first couple, the they're all nitrogen. These first two don't have a charge, so I'm going to put zero in. And since I know they're all nitrogen, and I look nitrogen up on my periodic table, the atomic number is seven, I can put a seven in the bottom right-hand corner. So now I just have to figure out what they want. So atom or ion, well, that should be easy. Atom is anything with a neutral charge, and an ion is anything with charge. So these first two are atoms because they have no charge. These next two are ions because they do have charge. Specifically, you could say cation and ion, but whatever, you don't need that. Atomic number, that is the proton number, and it's in the bottom left-hand corner, and it's also written right there. So atomic number should be easy. Since they're all nitrogen, they're all gonna have atomic number seven, and therefore seven protons. Their mass number, it's written in for you, top left-hand corner. Now, keep in mind, on the periodic table, it says the mass is 14.0067, which you would round to 14. But on these problems, they're telling you the mass, so you can't use the mass on the periodic table directly because this is an isotope. It has a different mass than what the periodic table says. Obviously, two of them do, two of them don't. But if they give you the mass, you have to use it. So, 14, 15, 14, 15. It's that simple. For neutrons, we just subtract 7, 8, 7, 8. I'm just subtracting mass minus atomic number or mass minus proton number because they're the same thing. So there we go. All right. And the last one, electrons. Remember, P minus E equals C. So for this one, I'll do the whole thing. 7 minus electrons equals 0. So 7 electrons. In this one, it's also going to be 7 electrons. It's the same problem. In the next one, 7 minus the electron number equals plus 3. So that means I have 4 electrons. And the last one, 7 minus the electron number, x or e, doesn't really matter, equals negative 3. So in this case, I need to have 10 electrons. And that's how you figure out the electrons. All right, hopefully there's no questions on that. I am going to go over a few more because there are a couple things I need to mention before I have you do the rest. So, a couple things. Obviously, there's nothing written in. We assume the charge is zero. If they put a negative sign in for the charge, you should know at this point, but if you don't, it's fine. That really means negative one. Basically, in chemistry, they don't like writing the ones. I don't know why they don't do it, but they don't, so we'll just roll with it. So if they want you to, if they want it to be negative one, they'll just put a minus sign. If they wanted it to be negative two or more, then they need a number. Okay, so these two are going to be negative ones. If there was a plus sign, then it's the same rule for one. If it's um, if they put a plus, it's only it means plus one. If they wanted it to be plus two or more, then they have to include the number. And then the last thing on the back, yes, there's a back. So when you get down to here, this MN, if you notice, there's no mass written in. Now, up until now, I've been telling you if there's no charge, like these up here, then you assume that the charge is zero, which is true. If you have, well, let me rephrase that. If you have no way of knowing the charge, you assume the charge is zero, which for this worksheet is fine. That is not true about the mass. If you have no way of knowing the mass, then what you do is you go to the periodic table and you take it off the periodic table and round it. So for this one, for example, MN doesn't have a mass. Now that doesn't mean it's zero because no atom can have a mass of zero. It wouldn't be an atom then, right? So we have to take the mass off the periodic table, which is the most common mass for MN. It's 54.9380. When I round, I just look at the first number to the right of the decimal, 54.9. That's going to round up. So I'm going to assume the mass is 55. We're always going to make these whole numbers until I tell you otherwise. So that means the mass for these MNs are all 55 because I would round off the same periodic table every time. You can do it for the Vs and the AGs. You just got to find them on the periodic table, and then you'll be able to get their masses, and then the rest of this sheet should be self-explanatory. It's done just like the first page.